Hi there, good Chris. To see good to see you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for having us here at your office. Um, and you are the first one uh, doing our, our series. Um, how does it feel being the first professor being interviewed by our renowned series? It's very exciting, but also a bit intimidating. A bit, yeah. Thank <laughs> um, you. Come in, come in. Thank you. Lovely office. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've had to clean it just for you guys. Uh, So, Chris, um, what do you usually get up to during the week um, and what were you doing just before we got here? So, just before you arrived, I was going through some funding options. We're trying to get our lab started again after COVID-19 yeah. and we've discovered that some of our machines have had better days. So, we're looking for new funding so we can get those into place. Cool. And um, is that what you usually get up to during the week? So, how does a typical Tuesday in your calendar look like? One of the great things in this job is that there isn't really a typical Tuesday. So during teaching, on uh, Tuesday afternoons, I'm delivering Foundation Engineering 4. But otherwise, we could be doing anything. We could be doing research, preparing new teaching, working on strategy. There's all sorts of things we could be doing. Cool. Um, so we know you're a geotechnical engineer, or correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, would you tell us what a geotechnical engineer uh, researcher does? Well, yeah, so the, the hierarchy somewhat is we have geologists who look at how the Earth formed, we have soil scientists who look at what the soil can do, and a geotechnical engineer is interested in how the soil reacts to something, so either to being loaded by us or by nature. And a geotechnical researcher's job is to understand how to model that more efficiently. Cool. Um, so why do you think your field of research is so exciting, um, and what made you become a geotechnical engineer? So my specific field of research is unsaturated soil mechanics, which if you look at your classical soil mechanics, we have soil and water. And in unsat soil mechanics, we have soil, water and air. Recently, we've taken that one level further and we've made the soil water repellent. So we now have effectively four phases. We have soil, we have water, we have air, and also the skin that's repelling the original water. And that's really exciting. The material could be used for water sequestration, particularly in arid areas, so usually we would use clay for that, but clay is in short supply in places like, let's say, Dubai. If we can treat the sand to repel water, then we could use that for water sequestration instead. The issue is, we believe that this material might actually be quite unstable from a geotechnical point of view. So what we're researching is how its stability could be affected by how it interacts with the water that's present already. That sounds really cool. And I've just seen that behind us we've got a drawing board. Would you like to explain your current research and your findings in the sexiest possible way? <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will try. The only sexy thing really in unsat soil mechanics is the amount of curves we get to play with. Um, if I point towards it, this, this is how soil normally works. If you imagine you have two particles and there's water stuck between them. The water is curved. And because of that, you can kind of imagine it's being sucked into place. And that means that these two particles are being brought together by that water. And that's what gives soil stability when it's unsaturated, so much like a sandcastle at the beach. With our material, the curves go the other way. And you'll see I've got a double question mark, because we have no idea what that means in terms of stability for the materials. But what this, ha what this means is that the pressure of that water must be higher than the air around it. So it's forcing those two particles apart. In unsat soil mechanics, we have one curve to rule them all, which is the degree of saturation versus what we call suction, which is this phenomenon. And in normal, everyday soils, this curve is very boring and looks like this. And this basically says, as the water runs out, it becomes more stable. So there's more of this stuff drawing these two particles together, and the safer we are. So the drier a soil gets, the more stable it is. What we think happens with our material is actually something like this. So we have a very dangerous zone here, where as it dries out, it becomes less stable. The particles, as I said, get forced apart, and then we have a region here where the soil could be doing something we don't know. But when we do know, we'll be able to bring it into geotech design. That's very cool. Yeah, no, that's that's lovely. Um, so let's talk a bit more about your life outside of work because students want to get to know you better as well um, as a person. So what do you do other than research? 
So other room. than research, well, the flippant answer is, of course, teaching. Yeah. But um, outside of teaching and research, uh, my actual passion is uh, medieval sword fighting, <laughs> from which cool. I've received many injuries <laughs> because I'm still learning. <laughs> nice. And what do you like most about Edinburgh? Edinburgh is, it has, there's a certain feeling about the city that no other city has. There's a, there's a freedom about it. So it's, it's, it's as busy as London, but it's not as penned in. People seem happy and wanting to learn more about life. That's cool. And why do you think Edinburgh students are the best? Well, I probably should jump to defence of my own home <laughs> university first. But um, yeah, so I've had four years at Edinburgh now, and I can definitely say it's passion. Like Edinburgh students throw themselves at every problem we give them, which unfortunately means our problems have to be really hard. Yeah. So you like soil. Do you prefer the beach or the mountains? Definitely the mountains, because beach sand is coarse and irritating and gets everywhere. Night in or night out? Uh, as long as it's with friends, I don't. Cool. Funniest moments of all the pre-recorded lectures you've had to do last year? That was the first time I tried to set up my microphone, and our dog thought it was a chew toy, which was very nearly a very expensive mistake. Since then, she was banned from the room. <laughs> In another life, what would you be instead of a geotech researcher? Um, probably a Bitcoin investor, but otherwise an archaeologist or maybe an architect. Nice. Tell us the coolest thing about yourself students don't know about you. So I used to live in Australia. I did my research training out there. And whilst in Australia, I got into my sword fighting, but also forging. So since then, I've been able to sort, forge swords, daggers, knives, spears, you name it. And I'm this close to getting my own forge again. So wow. I'd like to take that up again. Very cool. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. Um, it's great to know you better, and um, yeah, hope to see you soon, and hope having more professors joining. Thanks for having us. Really good to have you guys. Thank you. Just come, come closer. Mm -hmm. That's okay. People seem happy and... Um, example, having to cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh,